Would you guys give a round of applause for our Beach Camp students there? We're going to get to hear from a few of them in just a second. Before we do, if we got any guys and girls that are going to kids' church today, you guys can go now at this time. There's TJ in the back. You guys say, hey, TJ. There he is in the back. All right, you guys can go. We'll see you guys back in here in just a little bit. And uh, if you guys would, y'all turn in your Bibles with me to Romans 6. This morning we're going to be in Romans 6. We'll take a break this week, just this week from Luke, and we're going to go to Romans And we're going to talk about some of the things that we talked about a little bit at beach camp this week um, and really focus primarily on how sin loses its power in our lives. And, uh, man, we had an amazing, as Heather said earlier, we had an amazing group of students go to camp with us this week. I was so excited uh, just to get a chance to be with them, to get to spend some time with them. I'm a little bit tired this morning uh, because when you go through VBS all week and then you go straight off of that and you leave at 5 a.m. and you go to beach camp, all right, you're just going to be a little bit tired. But uh, some of them kind of did that with me, uh, I guess, last week, too. So there, there's some tired faces in the black shirts this morning. But, uh, uh, but we had a great, great week. I did get stuck in an elevator this week. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that, so I was stuck in an elevator for about 25 minutes this week with actually a totally different student. Uh, it's always great when, like, you're a 37-year-old guy uh, in your swim trunks, and you go into the elevator, and there's, like, a middle school girl, and you guys are stuck, all right? That's just kind of how it worked. I had no idea who she was, but um, I was, I've was i been stuck in an elevator before. I didn't panic. It was okay. Uh, she got a little panicky. Uh, she's like, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And she was getting a little, I was like, there, there's still air uh, in here. We're not, we're not that stuck, all right? You know, the doors opening just a little tiny bit, right? But uh, I did feel bad for her <laughs> being stuck with me on the elevator. She's getting on her cell phone telling her friends, you guys have got to do something. I'm going to die in here. You know, I was like, it's, it's going to be okay. We're going to be all right. So, uh, but my wife liked to make fun of me for that. But, uh, you know, I got to thinking while I was stuck in the elevator, um, you know, sometimes those of us who go through this thing called following Jesus, I think sometimes we feel like we get to a point where we feel kind of stuck. We feel stuck in the life that we've been put into. Uh, We feel stuck where we are right now. We have these thoughts maybe that sometimes get put into our heads of I'm I'm never getting out of this frustrating thing that I'm in the middle of right now. I'm never getting past this sin habit. I'm never getting past this issue with my family. If you never move past letting, though, your sin control you, what I believe is that you'll never let God be all that he wants to be in your life. But I think we all... We all feel stuck sometimes, right? And and one of the things that I believe that God teaches us in his word is really how to get unstuck, how to get out of the situations sometimes that we have found ourselves in, especially when it revolves around the idea of sin. And one of the things that I was really, really encouraged by our students this week is a lot of them talked through uh, just one-on-one as we would have conversations or in our, in, our, uh, in our rooms, group by group, we would have conversations. I heard a lot of good stuff about people saying, you know what, I want my life to be more centered around Jesus than centered around myself. And so Romans 6 is a verse we talked about a little bit this week, and it's just one that kind of stuck out in my mind. And so I want to start in verse 1, and we'll go through uh, the first several verses of this chapter, starting with verse 1 and 2. And so we'll just check that out first. And it says this. Well then, should we, those of us who are believers, those of us who are followers of Jesus, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? And I think the first thing that we see from this passage and from these verses is this, that sin loses its power when we give our lives to Jesus. Sin loses its power when we give our lives to Jesus. Sin is supposed to lose its power, right, when we give our lives to Jesus. The question is, what does it really mean to be dead to sin and to truly understand the wonderful, amazing grace of God? And I was reminded this week of just how wonderful, just how amazing the grace is that God gives us. I was reminded through the messages. I was reminded through these students. The theme of the week, as it says on our shirts, was access. It says access. This, by the way, I I said this is probably one of the most simplest shirts ever put together by any a student pastor or anything. It's like a box and the word access, but somehow it's still cool, all right? So just because we're all wearing it, I guess, that's probably why, but, but I was like, it's just, it's like a really, really simple shirt, but the idea of the week, the theme of the week for us, as it says on our shirts, was the idea of access and access to God, and what an amazing thing it is that we have access to God. 
And yet one of the things that, that we talked about this week is how sometimes even the idea of access to God, having that access to the throne of God, having the ability to talk to the creator of the universe, having the ability to be one-on-one when I'm by myself with God, sometimes in our culture that has become a boring thing. And it should never be a boring thing, the fact that we have access to God. I want to invite up uh, Jason Crawford. You guys give a round of applause. Where'd Jason go? There he is right there. Y'all give a round of applause for Jason. Come on up. Jason's going to share a few thoughts, um, just some things that we were kind of taught this week. And uh, so, Jason, I'm going to give you the mic and the podium. Here you go. Thank you, sir. So, probably not a lot of you uh, know me. We've only been coming to uh, Grace Point since about the first of the year, kind of right after you guys moved in this building. Uh, but it's, it's been a good um, five or six months. Uh, we've really uh, enjoyed getting to know Pastor Reagan, and I actually kind of knew Heather before, but um, we won't go into all that story. But <clears throat> if you truly follow God and the Holy Spirit, let you let him lead you no matter what vessel speaks to you. Um, you know, sometimes you don't know what your next couple weeks are going to look like. I work at... Excuse me, I work at Middletown Christian, and so I had most of my summer off and had some things planned on my own for these past couple of weeks uh, until about two and a half weeks ago when all that got flipped upside down, and uh, so I can empathize with the busyness of the last couple of weeks as well with getting involved in VBS and making an a, uh, unexpected trip to Myrtle Beach. But that being said, it was, it was a great couple of weeks just watching the Lord, uh, what he has done over those couple of weeks. <clears throat> excuse me, and it, it's been good. So we had the privilege of, of hearing two speakers uh, over the cu- past couple weeks, David Platt and Drew Worsham. And just all of the messages that they brought really had a lot of good content. Uh, it, it was just, just great uh, to, to hear more of the word and just to hear what they had to say. We actually kind of got a, a, another extra special blessing um, when we showed up, we, we actually knew some other kids from another church, and I got to see a, an old pastor friend, so that was kind of unexpected for me, and that was, that was an extra blessing. But one of the messages that really kind of stuck out in my mind was uh, David Platt talked about three truths that Christians are missing out on. And he, he talked a little bit in Colossians uh, verse, or chapter 1, verse 27, and he says, "...to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery..." among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, and that is the hope and glory. So I'm not going to go into all the verses that he used, but just a couple things that I want to touch on. And the first message, he, or the first point he made in this message was, Jesus died for you so that he could li- live in you. Heather kind of touched on that a little bit um, earlier. Number two was he desires a meaningful relationship with us, not just monotonous religious motion. And Pastor Reagan kind of touched on this just a little bit. <clears throat> if you've been in church for any length of time, you know, sometimes you have stretches where you, you're just kind of going through the motions. Uh, you're just, you get worn down after a, a, a time of, or a season of time like these past couple weeks. You just kind of get worn down and you just kind of keep going through the motions. But that's not what God desires for us. He wants us to have that meaningful relationship. And the third point was, because Jesus is in you, nothing can stand against us. Uh, I, think, I think David Platt gave a, uh, a, a kind of a, an example of this, uh, which, which is really good, and I don't think I'd ever seen that, but with the one with the boxes. You guys remember that, the, the little totes that he put inside of each other? <clears throat> and the, the point of that, or the, the message of that was, if we're a Christian, the Holy Spirit is inside us. So he kind of drew had, had one of this little box and and drew the spirit and put that inside of us. So it's kind of like the nesting dolls, you know. You've seen those where you put one inside of the other. So he just did that with totes. So he put the spirit, we're inside of the spirit. Then we're also inside of Christ. And then Christ is inside of God. So you have all of these boxes uh, if, if you're a Christian. So the, the, he just reemphasized the point that if we're saved, if we're a Christian, if we're, we have a relationship with God, the devil has to get through all of that to get to us. Um, obviously, if you let him get to you, then it's a little bit easier. But 
<clears throat> if we're trying to, to walk with God and keep that relationship tight, then, then he has a lot that he has to get through. But <clears throat> the, the gospel message was very, very clear. If you were there, I think they said 2,800 students, thereabouts, every one of them heard the gospel. We've talked about uh, the past couple weeks about um, reaching people that have never heard, heard uh, the gospel in, in other parts of the world. Uh, the kids there heard it very clear several times. Uh, so everyone had that chance. But another part of that that he really tried to hit home was in a different message was if there's evidence in your life. So the Bible talks about if you're a Christian, you're going to have fruit to show for that. So it was really cool to just see our kids grow through the week, too. Um, I, we had five professions of faith. I believe the kids that, that decided to dedicate their life to God, we had four baptisms uh, on the beach, um, which was really cool, too. I had never been a part of, of that. That was pretty awesome. Um, one thing that kind of stuck out in my mind, too, was just seeing the, the dynamic between some of the older kids and some of the younger kids. Uh, one specific one was seeing Antonio who is a very uh, new believer, getting to, to speak to, to some of the other kids and having a big impact in some of their lives uh, to the point where uh, he was um, able to have a part in, in Charlie's baptism because Charlie felt that that was uh, important to him because Antonio had a big part, a part in his uh, coming to, to know Christ as well. So it was just really, really cool. I have, have been involved in a lot of camps myself, uh, some have been really good camps. Some have been, we'll just call them adventurous. So I didn't know most of these kids going into this, just uh, had been around some of them through VBS. So I really didn't have any idea what to expect. Uh, but I will tell you that I was, I was very, very pleasantly uh, surprised or pleased. And, and it really, really, really just was a great week. So thank you guys for your prayers. And as these guys are trying to begin or renew their journeys, uh, just keep them in your prayers as well. You guys, I really appreciate Jason coming. It, 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 he took basically two weeks off to be Woody the Cowboy <laughs> for us last week at VBS and then to also uh, be one of our uh, camp counselors. Um, but I, I don't want, to, want you just to hear from adults today. Um, I'd like for you to also hear, he mentioned Antonio. Uh, where's Antonio at? There, would y'all welcome Antonio up to the stage? Um, yeah, come on up. Jason, you know, Jason's a teacher, so, you know, he's well-spoken. And Antonio, you haven't been on a lot of stages sharing with groups like this before, have you? No, I've been on a lot of stages. Okay, he says he gets a little stage fright. So I'll hang up here with you. But uh, um, I know Antonio, last night he typed out what he wanted to say. So I think he's going to read that to you. Just his testimony from camp as well. So uh, it's not really about just the camp, but it's mostly like why I decided to um, make a decision to follow Jesus. So like the last church I went to, I loved it there, but I would volunteer with my family. And the only problem I really noticed is that we never sat down and listened to the services. I always said I was a Christian, but I didn't know much more than he had sacrificed his life to release us of our sins. And I've always, sorry, but I knew he was always there for me when I needed him, and even when I didn't think I did. And when I needed him the most, he was there without me even realizing. While I was living in Heber Heights, I was pretty much a straight A, B student. I didn't love going to school, but I made the best of it. A little ways into the second semester of my junior year, I had started to feel that I was alone at times. And it, as it is, just my mom and I living together, and she's a single full-time working mom, and both my brothers have already moved out for a few years. And in an attempt to cope with feeling alone, I began to make some not so great choices. I was doing what some say a typical high student thought was the normal. During the second semester, I began to fall, and I went through one of the worst times of my life. I had no motivation, no energy, and no willpower to do anything. I didn't go to school for about two months till we had moved to, to Kettering. And that was just amazing that we were able to move 
when, and then sometimes around that time, Minty had mentioned Grace Point. If you guys don't know Minty, Minty is my brother's girlfriend. And I began to see a light at the end of the dark tunnel without Grace Point and Jesus' plan for me. I do not think I would have experienced something so spiritual and so heartwarming than beach camp. It showed me that I'm a lot stronger and that I want to live my life for something much greater, and that is following Jesus and building a faithful relationship with him. Without him, I do not know if I would be going to church at the moment, and uh, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> you guys, Antonio had been in church for a lot of, a lot of years. He said, he just told us, as we, we talked multiple times this week, he told us, you know, he has never before understood how to really give his life to Christ. And the excitement of the access that you can have to God and the excitement that you can have in helping other people understand and know about God. He's heard about God his whole life, but it's different to hear about God and to say, God, I, man, I want to pour my life into what you want me to pour my life into. As Jason talked about, the first night's message was given by David Platt, who shared with us from Isaiah 6 that it is an amazing thing to be an individual who gets to know the God who created all things, to know that you can talk to him anytime that you want. But for many of us, God is more like a distant idea than a close friend. And David Platt said this, and, and there were four things. I wrote them down that he, he wanted to, he said he was praying for us during the week. But this is things that I, I mean, I just say, I just pray for our church as well. For every single person who would say, I want to follow Jesus. I know Jesus, but I want to follow him. I, I want my life to be about him. He said these four things is what he was praying. was number one, that we would all have a high view of God. That we would have a serious view of sin. That we would experience the wonder of his grace in our lives. And then number four, that our life would count for what matters most in this world. And just like Heather said earlier, man, I, I've seen times in my life, back when I was a student, when I was a seventh grader, where I got a chance to say, okay, God, I'm going to lay my life before you. And we sang a song even at camp that says, I lay my life on the altar over and over, over and over were the words of the song. And I just got to thinking again about, man, how many times in my life have I just had to say, okay, God, again, I lay everything at your feet. See, it's not a one-time thing. It's an over and over and over again thing to say, God, I sacrifice Whatever it is that you want me to sacrifice, I put my yes on the table, God. Whatever it is that you want my yes to be on the table for, over and over again. Don't buy into the lies that everything else matters more than the idea of sacrificing your life for God, of giving your life to God. Billions and billions of dollars is spent every year, we were told, on getting us to focus on things that don't really matter. One of the things David Platt said this, he said, are you going to get to heaven one day and, and be standing there in front of God and say, God, I was amazing at Fortnite. God, I was amazing at travel ball. God, I was amazing at my work. I made more money than everybody else. God, I was amazing at this. I was amazing at that. But what's really going to matter at the end of this life? What do you want to stand before God and say that you did with your life? That's what it means to give your life to God, to think that way more than we just think about it being about a prayer we pray or, or just a baptism, which are both great things, but it's more than that. I think a lot of times when we have camp or VBS, there's this idea that kids and students won't stick with their decisions to follow Christ. I even found myself wondering with some of them uh, this week, uh, different students making decisions, and man, I was so excited about them, but then my brain just always goes to, will it stick when they get back, and so my prayer for our students, and I hope you'll pray for them, those same four things that David Platt prayed for us, that we would encourage them and that we would walk alongside them and that we would help them to be, as we sang earlier, to be faithful to the end, to have a high view of God, a serious view of sin, to experience the wonder of his grace over and over and over again, and to make their lives count for what matters most in this world while we still have time. See, I believe that sin loses its power when we truly give our lives to Jesus, not just when we play at church. And scripture goes on to say in verse 3, it says, Or have you forgotten 
That when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death. For we died and we were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. Since we've been united with him in his death, we also will be raised to life as he was. See, I believe sin loses its power in our lives, even in believers' lives, when we begin to be more and more united around the purpose of of Jesus. And that's what these verses right here say the purpose of baptism is. We're going to show you here in just a second some testimonies, and we're going to show you in just a second some baptisms that we did at the beach while we were down there. We're going to show you guys what these students were saying. But before we do that, I want you to think about the purpose even of baptism. Why do we do this? Why do we bring out a water trough? And why do we, why do we baptize people week after week after week? Why do we do that? We do that because, man, there's something inside us that needs to unite with Christ, that needs to say, God, I'm with you in this. I'm not just going to just kind of pretend at this when I come to church. I'm with you in this, and I'm going to unite with this. this. These verses, these are the verses that we say when we say, buried with Christ in baptism and raised to walk in a new way of life. Why do we say those words? Because they're right here in this passage right here, and it says that the purpose of that is to say, man, I am united with Christ. I'm saying no to myself, and I'm not going to stay who I was. I'm going to be a new person raised to walk in a new way of life. I'm going to be, begin to walk, and I'm going to begin to talk, and I'm going to be able to begin to live and to follow Jesus. And, and man, I'm uniting with him in what his purposes are instead of just the purposes that I had before. Sin loses its power. When we say we're united in power and in purpose with Jesus, we had several students, as Jason mentioned, who were baptized at camp this week. And according to these verses, to be baptized, I hope you understand the students' means to be united with Jesus. I want to show you guys a video and uh, let you hear some testimonies. The testimonies were out on the beach, so they're a little bit, uh, um, a little bit, there's some wind that's kind of blowing and different things, so uh, we put the captions on the places where we thought it was a little more difficult to hear, but I want you guys to watch this video. I want you to hear the, the students in their own words and with their own lives show how they're uniting with Christ, and so check this out on the screen. I want to introduce one more person to you this morning. You guys know this guy pretty well. This is Josh Straw, by the way. And by the way, y'all give a round of applause for those that got baptized. That's Josh, come on up, man. And uh, you got to baptize with me, several of those, several of those guys and girls. So uh, why don't you share just a little bit as well. Oh, hello. There we go. Um, <clears throat> so sorry, my voice kind of is garbage right now. I was screaming a lot um, at, on the beach, so... <clears throat> but um, just like Heather was talking about this morning, um, I also have a, a very special place in my heart with camp um, because it was at a retreat where I also gave my life to Christ. Um, so whenever we go, you know, I always, you know, reminisce on that moment, and I'm always uh, thankful to Christ for what he did in my life. <clears throat> so um, we had a very fun week. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, me and Reagan, we were talking, and we talked about how um, this is most likely our favorite trip um, or, or retreat that we've ever been on. I know for, for sure for me. <clears throat> but um, you know, when, we, when we first came to camp, I had two, two goals that I told the students. The first one was, um, you know, grow closer with each other in the, great, in the group. And the second one was to grow closer to God. And um, for a few of us in our group, then um, that last one was, was very real, very present in their lives. Um, they grew very close to God um, on this trip. <clears throat> And um, on one of the nights I had, with the help of Antonio, I had the honor and the privilege to lead Charlie to Christ. Um, and I've known Charlie for a while. We've been, we've been friends for, for a little bit. Um, so, so that had a very special place um, in my heart. I remember we were talking. We were talking through um, the gospel, and I was explaining it to him. And through the words that, um, that he was sharing back with me, it was very evident that, um, that he needed a Savior. He needed Christ. He knew that um, his sin was that has separated him from Christ, and that he couldn't get to him on his own. Um, so, so that was uh, sorry. <clears throat> that was very um, re uh, refreshing to hear um, and to see him um, give his life to Christ on that night. Uh, it was it was very very good to see. <clears throat> and um, so, David Platt, when he was talking one of the sermons, he was uh, talking about eternity and, and you know how how the impact of giving your life to Christ, what it did for you in eternity, not just in this life, but in eternity forever. And he talked about, and, I, and he kept on saying it over and over again, and I'm glad he did, um, that 10 billion years from now, just think about it, like billions and billions of years into the future, that the decision that Charlie and Antonio and the, and the other people in our group made, that they're going to be in heaven rejoicing 
and eternity is just going to be beginning. Um, so just, just that thought that, you know, the moment that they had then and the decision they made, it doesn't just affect this life. It affects the next, the next one to come. And they are saved. They, they have been um, saved from, from the, the darkness and the destruction that, has, that was waiting for them um, in eternity. So, and, and the baptisms, so I have never baptized anybody before, so that was a first. Um, and an extra challenge was the, was the beach and the waves, so that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, 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 you can do it anywhere. But um, the baptisms, they're very significant because, you know, like Reagan said, um, just the symbolism when we go down, when we, you know, we're buried with Christ in baptism, we die to our old self. And then when we raise, you know, we raise with Christ, we are, you know, to walk in a new way of life. You know, we, we shed off the old skin of, of our sin, and our sinful nature, and we walk in our new resurrected bodies. Um, so, and the, the, the big thing spiritually for me um, during this trip was the question kind of, I kind of asked myself over and over again, was why am I here? You know, why, why am I here serving in, the, in this youth group? Um, why am I here, you know, hanging out with your kids and yelling and losing my voice, you know, the whole week? Like, what, what Why? And that picture right there, that's, that's why I'm here. Because if only one person in this whole youth group can give their life to Christ, if there's just one, then me losing my voice, me not having a lot of sleep over the, over the past two weeks, it's all worth it. It doesn't matter what happens to me, but if just one person can get saved, then it's worth it. So um, that's, that's all I have to share for today. So. so I can give Josh a round of applause as well. Thank you for sharing, Josh. We're not united with Christ because of where we attend. We're united with Christ because of who we serve together. And I love watching Josh uh, this past week serve these students. And actually, I'll tell you, Josh, what I had next in my notes was exactly what you said, that the less we focus on the now and instead focus on the 10 billion years from now, the more our lives begin to align with the purposes of Jesus. You guys, I think that's what it means. You want to you start getting power over sin, then continue to align your purposes and your obedience with what Christ asks you to do in your own personal walk with him. It starts with baptism, but it doesn't stop there. The more you unite with what he says and what he wants from you, the more I believe that God will use you and, and, and the more that you'll be focused on the things that he wants you to be focused on instead of the selfish things that you were focused on before. I want to finish with these verses, verse 6 through 11. It says, we know that our old sinful selves were crucified with Christ so that sin might lose its power in our lives. We are no longer slaves to sin, just like we sing. For when we died with Christ, we were set free from the power of sin. And since we died with Christ, we know that we will also live with him. We are sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has any power over him. When he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So you also should consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin and alive to God through Christ Jesus. See, sin loses its power when we recognize more the power of Jesus in our lives and what he does for us. I love these verses. I mean, think about what it just said right there again. We're no longer slaves to sin. We were set free from the power of sin. We can now truly live and can be sure of this because Christ was raised from the dead. He will never have to die again. He's already dead uh, dead. He's already dead and rose from the dead and he's already, he's already conquered sin and he's already conquered death and we don't have to worry about death any longer having any power over him or therefore having any power over us because of this you should consider yourself to be dead to the power of sin over your life and that is an amazing amazing truth that we read there and that we read in this passage that man we shouldn't continue in sin and just let it continue to reign in our life we were never intended to be stuck in sin Jesus's intent was to get us unstuck out of the situations that we found ourselves in in this life and to change us day by day by day as we become more and more obedient to him and what he has for us. Last picture I want to show you guys of camp this morning is these three. I just want to tell you, I love these three people that were on the screen. These were three of our chaperones that went with us, Josh, Nick, and Anna, right there in the middle. And uh, you guys, you already heard a little bit of Josh and how he was sharing his faith this week and so excited to get to baptize the first time. Josh, I remember the first time I got to baptize, it was at a camp. It was in a pool, and I got to baptize a guy named Trevor. 
And I'll never forget that moment. And I believe, I believe you'll never forget what you got a chance to do this week because you're doing what God asks of you. And my belief is it's going to be the start of a beautiful ministry that God has for you. But I loved how he was an example. I love how Anna was an example. I wish Anna could hang around with us a little longer. She's about to go to college in Florida but she led our middle school Bible study with our girls every single day and was just a great, the word that came to my mind was just a great example of what a high school te- a teenager that follows Christ is supposed to look like. Nick, he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. In the six almost weeks, five, six weeks that he's been here, and you guys, he works harder than anybody I think I've, I've just about ever met. And, uh, and he's encouraged me in that, and he's pushed me in that. He's always asking somebody else, what can I do? How can I serve? What do you need? And I just want to tell you, as I, as I look at these three, I want to remind you that we at this church, we are not about weak decisions or weak living for Christ or weak lives for Christ. We're about making strong decisions for Christ and living a life that sets a high standard for what it looks like to follow and to serve Jesus. As we close today, there was a question that was asked every single one of us when we started the week and then again when we finished the week, and it was just just stuck in my head. The question basically was this that was asked of us. If you were in a room alone with Jesus, what do you think that he would say to you right now? Do you realize that he wants to say something to you right where you are today? Do you realize that he wants to speak into your life right where you are in this moment? And that he has an individual message for every single one of us, every single one of us about where we are with him and how our relationship can be stronger with him. If you would, would you bow your heads with me? And I I want you just to ask yourself that question this morning, the same way our students asked that question of themselves this week. If if Jesus was, it was just you and him in this room this morning, and what do you think that he would say to you? What do you think that he would want to speak into your life? What part of your life would you say you need more of his power and more of his strength and more of his will to be able to to? to get past whatever it is in your life that you need to get past. Maybe there's something you would say, man, this is the next step. Man, I've just been kind of stuck not taking this step for a long time for him. What do you think that he would want to say to you right now? See, I believe the messages that our students heard this week, they weren't just for our students, but they were for me. They were for my wife. We stood in the middle of one of the songs, in the middle of worship, and just cried, cried just a little bit together, just all over again, because we knew God was speaking the same things to us this past week. I wonder what he would say to you, moms and dads, this morning. How united are you in the purposes of Christ in your life? And what matters most at the end of this life? What are you going to say to him that you did with your life? Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate and rejoice today. God, what you're doing, but God, we don't think you're through yet. God, we believe there's still more that you want to do in each of our lives. God, we we think there's still more you want to do in each of our families. God, we think there's still more you want to do in this community, in this area, God, as we reach more people for Christ, as we speak into other people's lives, as you speak through us. So, God, I pray, Father, you would help us, God, whatever you want to tell us this summer about who we are, whatever you want to tell us even right now in this moment, God, we want to hear from you. Jesus, we love you. We thank you so much, God, for how you speak to us. Ushers, if you guys would, y'all come on forward. We're going to take up our offering.
And as we take up our offering this morning, I just ask that, Jesus, you would just be with us, Father, even during this moment. God, that you would speak to us, Father, you would speak to our our hearts, God, and just allow us, Father, just to give back to you, God, how you want us to give back to you. Jesus, that you would just continue, God, to teach us something new about who you are. We love you, Jesus. We ask all these things in your precious and holy name. Amen.